Hey everybody, this is Dr. Oob. I want to talk about my immune recovery IV package and I'm going to use it in reference to the Re Reordan Clinic and what they did with high dose vitamin C. So first I want to go over some of the background of IV vitamin C and why it's used. So many people don't realize that the intravenous doses that we use vitamin C is way higher than you could get naturally. It's something like 200 oranges that you would have to eat in order to get the vitamin C that you would achieve in these levels. Not to mention, even if you were able to eat the 200 oranges in the right amount of time, you're, you would ultimately have digestive distress and not ultimately able to absorb that much vitamin C. So technically, this is one of the few things we do in functional medicine where we're actually doing something that's not natural. We're we're taking vitamin C to excessive levels that are not able to be achieved naturally, no matter how you got it. So I always want to make that differentiate when we're, yes, we're using a natural agent, we're using vitamin C, but we're going to high dose levels in order to achieve a different outcome. This was most uh, thoroughly proven by the Reordan Clinic, and I've got their main graph that, that they use to prove. So the, the high dose vitamin C has gotten the most reputation for helping with Epstein-Barr virus or the monovirus or EBV as it's more commonly caused, called. So I want to go over this graph real quick and then we'll dive into what the components of my IV infusion package for immune recovery is. First of all, so this, this line that you see going up, down, up, down, is the, um, undo that, is the Epstein-Barr titers or how powerful Epstein-Barr was in these patients. And all they did is, if you see these little black dots down here or uh, white squares, um, this is how many vitamin C infusions the patients got. Now, in the Reordan Clinic, they were doing a true medical study. And in true medical study fashion, they weren't allowed to do anything else with their patients. They could only do one intervention and that one intervention alone. So they weren't doing gluten-free, dairy-free, optimizing, gut function, repairing detox pathways, they were only giving IV vitamin C. And this study, even with IV vitamin C, proved that it worked. It required a lot of infusions, more than I would ever give, more than I have given, in order to get to those levels. But the reason why is because they weren't able to do anything else. So what you see here is they got a lot of infusions here to here, and they dropped their titers significantly probably within the patient feeling better and not even knowing they had symptoms of EBV, EBV. But once they stopped it, what do you see? You see that the titers rose back up. Now this is over the period of a year. So they were treated for about uh, half a year and then they stopped infusions over the next half a year and their levels rose back up. And then what happened again? They received more treatments and once again, they dropped below. So I forget what this kind of study is called in medicine. Luckily, I don't remember all those statistical terms. But basically, they gave a treatment, watched the efficacy, they removed the treatment, watched it get worse, and then they applied the treatment again and watched it get better to prove that what they were doing was working. Now, over time, if you'll notice, eventually once they started um, or decreased the amount of infusions, they had a small bump, but ultimately the titers were lower and stayed lower with much, much, much less infusions, kind of maintenance therapy. So the idea here is that high dose vitamin C improves your immune system's ability to fight viruses. Now I'm going to explain this a little further and the, this is mostly theory and not very well proven, but this is the idea. So the idea is that we always have viruses running through our system. The easiest one to compare it to is the chicken pox because everybody knows about chicken pox. We get chicken pox as a kid nowadays is vac vaccinated against so many of you may not have seen it recently but if you're like me you got chicken pox the old-fashioned way. Your mom threw a chicken pox party when someone had the chicken pox brought all the kids over the kids got chicken pox and then moved on with their life. Once you have the chicken pox virus, it is in you the rest of your life. It hides in your spinal cord and it is there the rest of your life. If your immune system if your immune system gets dampened or weakened, you take too many steroids, you have too much stress, you get older, whatever the cause, when your immune system dips, the um, herpes virus, the um, chicken pox virus is a herpes virus, the chicken pox virus comes out to play again, but it doesn't come out like the chicken pox. It comes out as a painful rash that now we call shingles. Shingles is not a new virus. Shingles is the virus you got as a child as chicken pox. As many of you know, it's a good idea to get chicken pox as a baby and not as an adult. The older you get the viral infection, the worse you, your symptoms are. Um, so if you, if you, same thing with mono, majority of kids in America are exposed to EBV before they turn the age of three or something like that. And I think the number's around 95% of the kids already get EBV by the time they turn three. Maybe wrong on that, but it's up there. 
the idea is that when you get EBV as a child, you get a runny nose, you get pink eye, you get some sort of viral infection that your parents would have never known anything different. Maybe took you to the doctor and the doctor said, oh, it's a viral infection and you went about your business, no big deal. If you don't get mono as a child and you wait until you get it as a teenager or older, now all of a sudden it's called kissing disease or it's called mono and your symptoms are much different. Usually your symptoms can be chronic fatigue for six months, that's the most common one, but you can get joint pains, rashes, sore throats, all kinds of stuff with the monovirus. It's a tough virus to get rid of the older you are. And the idea is that as a youngster, uh, as a baby, your immune system is on overdrive, trying to find anything and everything in the environment, trying to learn what's going on. So the younger you get exposed, the better you do. Doesn't matter when you get EBV, doesn't matter when you get chicken pox, regardless, you're at risk for chronic infection. So shingles is not typically one that turns into a chronic infection. So you get shingle pox as a kid, you may get shingles outbreaks, but rarely does someone get shingles outbreak after outbreak after outbreak. One of the reasons being is because we have a drug to help with the chicken pox virus, the herpes virus, but we don't for EBV. So EBV, once you get EBV, it is in your system for the rest of your life, and it's your immune system's responsibility to kind of keep it in the corner, to put it in the corner and not let it come out to play again. If it comes out to play again, then you have the same symptoms you did when you were a baby or as a teenager. You can have fatigue, you can have myalgias, you can have autoimmunity, you can have cancer. There's a lot of things being tied to EBV right now, and some of it is loosely tied right now in the medical literature, but it's still tied nonetheless, so we haven't heard the rest of EBV. EBV. So one of the ideas is to get your levels tested. Um, a lot of practitioners, in my opinion, over-report EBV. It's important to have someone uh, knowledgeable in testing EBV to make sure they're looking at the levels the right way. In my opinion, everything hinges on the early antigen, IgG. And if you, if you look back at what the Reordan Clinic were, were testing, I don't know if you can see that, but they were testing only one marker in general, EBV early antigen IgG. This is the most important marker because it is the one that's telling you whether you have a chronic infection, an acute infection, or it's resolved. So that's the only marker I look at to find out if someone is chronically infected. If it's positive, you can generally assume that you're chronically infected. There are three other antibodies, four in total, and so you want to make sure you look at the report carefully. You want to listen to your provider if they're telling you you have chronic and or not, but mainly in my opinion, it, it hinges on the early IgG, and that's the same thing the reordering clinic's looking at. So if you have chronic EBV, it's not the EBV's fault. I'm not a big believer in using supplements and prescriptions to try to lower the EBV virus. If your EBV virus is out of control, it's because your immune system is not policing it very well. It's telling you that your immune system is dysfunctional, or it's confused, or it's too busy attacking itself in an autoimmune fashion, or it's too busy attacking yeast overgrowth in the bowels to focus on viruses running rampant. Now, I believe that one day we'll learn more viruses that may be running our system, but right now EBV is taking the blame. So in our immune system recovery package, IV package, where our, our design is to boost the immune system, and we're using the Reordan Clinic's idea, and we're using um, EBV as the poster child, but whatever may be roaming your system, whether it may be Lyme, EBV, chicken pox, shingles, whatever the chronic virus may be that's roaming your system, by boosting your immune system, you should be able to tackle that. Now, one of the things I don't like about boosting the immune system is whenever I say that, if you have an autoimmune component, it's going to worry that, oh my gosh, if I boost my immune system, I may boost my autoimmunity. Now, that is partially true because if your immune system is so dysfunctional that it can't attack itself very well, but it has a propensity to, then yes, you may get worse symptoms as you restore your immune system. But ultimately, you must restore your immune system. You have to have an immune system. The good part about using IV vitamin C and natural remedies is that you you will never overcharge your immune system. You won't go overboard. You won't create rogue autoimmunity by boosting your immune system. So really the word we should be using is restoring the immune system instead of boosting it. We are boosting it from dysfunctional to normal, but really we're restoring it to normal is the ideal situation. If you do have autoimmunity and your, your symptoms get worse when you're restoring your immune system, that should be temporary because there's a ceiling effect. And in general, if you're restoring your immune system, you're restoring the autoimmune component, so that should fade in reverse as well as long as you're working with a functional medicine doctor to try and restore your autoimmune component or re reverse your autoimmune component.
So that's the basics behind the immune recovery package. But now I'm going to go through some of the details of the immune recovery package. So mainly everything hinges on vitamin C or ascorbic acid. It is um, used in very high doses. Once again, this is not levels that you would be able to achieve naturally. There's no way you can even take this in an oral version. Even if you attempted to take this much orally, although I have heard of people digesting 45,000 milligrams, which sounds excessive, it is excessive. Um, your, your bowels cannot handle oral vitamin C nearly as well as your system can handle IV vitamin C. Vitamin C orally gives you diarrhea and kind of GI distress when you start to get above levels of about 2,000, 3,000 milligrams. Each one of these vials is 25,000 milligrams or 25 grams. And we will go upwards of two, three, or even four vials for some of our bigger people that process the vitamin C faster. If you look at what the Reordan Clinic came up with in various studies, they aim for a vitamin C level. So a vitamin C level is difficult to obtain. It's not easy to get in the blood draw, um, phlebotomy situation sent to the lab. It requires all kinds of aluminum foil and preventing light and all kinds of stuff. We haven't been able to do it in our practice. So what we've done is we've done the cheap, easy method of using a glucometer or a blood sugar tester. So what you can do if you want to check your vitamin C level, if you're getting vitamin C infusion somewhere, is you check your blood sugar level before you do your infusion. And then you check your blood sugar level as soon as your infusion is done and you subtract the two numbers. And that gives you a rough estimate of what your vitamin C level is. It is not a true blood sugar reading. The vitamin C IV fools the blood sugar meter or the gl glucometer into thinking it's blood sugar. So don't get freaked out when you see a level of 200 or 300 on the blood sugar meter. That's not actual blood sugar, that's vitamin C. Also, if you're a diabetic getting vitamin C infusions, you may get freaked out a little bit when your blood sugar starts rising, but it's not real. You cannot rely on a glucometer for a good six to eight hours after you've done a vitamin C infusion. In general, we wanna aim for vitamin C levels. We aim for vitamin C levels over 300, and that's based on the protocol that um, I've written and I've read. So we start with one vial, increase you to two vials or three vials wherever we need to in order to get you to a high enough level. And we try to balance the electrolytes since there is a lot of electrolytes. We try to balance the electrolytes um, so you don't get super thirsty during the infusion and so that you have a nice balanced infusion. There is a 10 infusion package that we've put together. And the idea, as soon as we get you to your vitamin C goal, that's the vitamin C we stay at while introducing other components at the same time. People get too focused on vitamin C and fail to look at the other components that are needed to have an optimal immune system. For instance, I've talked a lot about mitochondria. I've talked a lot about detoxification. Your whole system relies on each other. So the immune system must detoxify as well. The immune system must make energy as well. So you can give yourself vitamin C until the cows come home, but if you're not taking care of the rest of your systems, then it's not gonna work very well. So while the backbone of my vitamin C program or immune recovery program is vitamin C, there are other components that I use. So I want to go through those, even though I've gone through them in other videos. The next most important component is the Myers cocktail. I've talked about it multiple times. The Myers cocktail has magnesium, a little bit of vitamin C, nothing like, it's like a 10th of the dose um, in the high dose vitamin C. It's got extra B12 and um, um, Myers B complex. I think I nailed all four of them. And the idea here is that we're powering your liver's detox pathways, the methylation pathway. We're giving your body the nutrients it needs, some of the nutrients it needs to make energy. And by that, by giving the immune system the energy components it needs, it can appropriately fight infections. I've never fought an infection personally, but I can imagine that it requires a lot of energy to be made. So Myers cocktail is part of every one of the infusions in order to power your whole system's nutrients, detoxification, and energy processes. You can't make new cells if you don't have enough energy. The next component is glutathione. Glutathione, while it is in some of my, our other packages, it's not in high dosages in our immune package, but it is important to detoxify the immune cells in order to have them functioning perfectly. So glutathione is a powerful detoxifier. If you want to know more about either of those, look at some of my other videos where I talk excessively about those two. There's a small amount of phosphatidylcholine or essential N that we use here. And the idea behind phosphatidylcholine is you're restoring the cell membranes. A cell membrane is what keeps nutrients coming in and trash going out. So if the cell membrane is dysfunctional, then it can't communicate with other cells very well. It can't get the nutrients it needs. It can't get the nutrients or the, the trash out that it needs to. So this has a small amount of restoring the, the cell membranes or the lipid, lipid membrane. This also regenerates mitochondria and helps produce energy inside of the 
the cell. But um, this is in small doses. My mitochondrial package is much more heavily focused on this. Um, this is a higher part as the infusions go along in the series of 10. And the reason why is because the vitamin C is designed to boost the immune system. By the time you're making more immune cells and more effective immune cells, then we're infusing much more of this over time. By the time you get to the 10th one, you're at max dose. And the idea is that we're trying to restore some of those cell membranes and the immune system that's circulating your body. The final component is the trace minerals, which is a part of all my packages, and the trace minerals are designed to replete some of your zinc, selenium, manganese, smaller minerals that you may not be absorbing from your nutrition or from your food, but are ultimately required to boost your immune system. You've probably heard that zinc is really beneficial for the immune system. That's why the product Zycam is mostly zinc in order to boost the immune system. So zinc is a critical element in our, um, our immune system, so that's part of the trace minerals that you get. So that's a rundown of our immune recovery package. There's more details, and I'm sure I could talk longer, as you know, um, about these. But that's the details. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Reach out on Facebook, YouTube, or wherever, whatever platform you're watching this on. And uh, if you're interested in getting our IV packages, just call or email my office in order to learn more and get scheduled.